I commit every person that shall be here under thy hand. This service is for you. Jesus, we commit everything. Lift up your hands and just say, God, this day is for you. This day is for you, Jesus. We commit every person unto thy hand, Lord. We commit our guests unto thy hand, my Father. Take preeminence today, Lord Almighty. Be worshipped in this place, my Father and my Lord. Every person that shall enter this place, his or her life will never remain the same again. Be worshipped, Jesus. Hakuna mungu mwingine kama wewe. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the name above every name, that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and even under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Today, Father, we gather once again because of your word. And I pray that, Father, even as we have gathered here, may we not live out of this place the same again. May our situation change for good in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for your glory to be revealed in our lives today. That even as we are coming to hear from you, we are going to realize our purpose in our lives. In the name of Jesus, I come against every darkness that will, my Father, hinder your word to your people today. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray for your glory. I pray for your power today. There is somebody who is coming out of this place with hope today. In the name of Jesus. Father, it's because of you. It's because of you. It's because of you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Just give God some good hand claps. Even as we welcome the praise and worship to proceed from here. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Tunataka kwa budu bwana na kumsifu. Amen. Kwa wimbo la za sifa na kuabudu. Amen. Haleluya. Amen. Praises. Haleluya. Tupige tu maneno. Haleluya.
It's only God we can praise His name. Yes. We adore His name every hour. Jesus. He is God of yesterday, today, and forever. And He will never fail. Yes. He will never change. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us just raise our hands as we give God this opportunity to be in His presence. As we thank Him for this far. He is a mighty God. As we continue to call him Yahweh, we are calling him Yahweh this wonderful morning. We are saying, Yahweh, you are good. Yahweh, you are great. Yahweh, you are mighty. Yahweh, you are faithful. Yahweh, you are righteous. Yahweh, you are holy. This far, if it wasn't for you, Lord, we wouldn't be here. But because of your goodness, because of your mercy, because of your love, because of your kindness, because of your gentleness, we are here this wonderful evening. Therefore, we do not take it for granted as we are calling him Yahweh. Yahweh, great and mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just talk to him. Just talk to him. Bien ya sante, Jesus. Bien ya leo kwa sababu amekuleta mahali hapa. Amekuleta mahali hapa. Umekuwa na chaji chaji. Bila cha kukua pamoja na yeye. Kukua pamoja na yeye. Kukua uwepo ni mwake. We do not take it for granted. Yes, you are. on his word, for his word says that blessed is a man who meditates on the word day and night for he is like a tree planted by the river his leaves never grow dry Jehovah, 
kwa sababu ya ukuu wake kwa sababu ya uwepo wa njema we don't take it for granted as we say you are Joshua alipo take over Moses the word of God says that the Lord told Joshua that fear not have courage for I am with you for I am the God with you the great I am God with us king of kings and lord of lords any man when wakati unapoenda mahali unapoenda unapoamka asubuhi anakuambia i am with you trust in me for i shall never forsake those that i love great and eternal god sante emmanuel sante emmanuel ambia ni asante baba asante kwa sababu umenipatia mahali pa kukaa Takulala Mahali ya takula takula Umenipa mavazi Umenipa watoto Umenipa familia Umenipa kazi There's something to thank him for this morning As he is God with you God with you He's telling you that fear not Take courage in all that you're doing If you're starting a business Do not fear He is with you He will guide you the great Emmanuel, the great Emmanuel, Jesus. make a step of faith, as you're telling him Emmanuel, yes,
of God first. Seek him through his word. Have your quality time with him. He is telling you this evening that seek him first. Seek him first. And even as we are here this morning, we are telling him, Lord, we have come to seek you. Mwambie ni asante kwa umbali huu. Asante Yesu. Asante Yesu.
want you to prepare your hearts for the word and for the men of God. Just say, God, I'm ready to hear from you. I'm ready to hear from you. This is my day. Tell God, this is the day. You have to speak to me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this time. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord. Thank you for your servants. I just want to take this minute to welcome our bishop. Put your hands together as we welcome our dad. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Just lift up your head just for a minute and just close your eyes and tell the Lord, I'm ready. Tell him what's a healing. What we are. Raise your voice. Raise your voice and tell him. Yes, you was the healing. One more time. Ah. Yeah. Just tell him, Lord, I glorify you. Open your mouth and tell him, out here, turn on this building. I glorify you. 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 Yes, Lord, I bless you. I bless you. I thank you and I bless you. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified, 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 be Put you in front, in front of my melody. You are all. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. I'll make room for two. I'll make room for two. You and I, Jesus. You are all. The one that matters, Lord. I'll put you in front. I'll put you in front. In front of my melody. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. Tell him, oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. You are all that matters. You are all
Father, we ask you today that you be the center and be able to shape our lives. Father, of everything that you do, purpose is the reason why we are here. Your intentions, your reasoning, your accounts, the things that you desire for us is the reason why we're here. We want to open our lives that, Lord, you may plant in us your intentions, implant in us your purposes according to your will. Father, we want to be able to dedicate ourselves this evening as we get to hear your word, that your word shall take us and change us and establish us according to your will. We thank and we bless you. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. Clap to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You can have your seats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, when you're quiet, it means the devil's in charge. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus on the throne. You know, when. <laughs> You know, when you are set free, your tongue becomes loose. I know when you're wicked, your tongue can be loose. But also God makes your tongue to be loose. Hallelujah. Buenas if you You can bless the Lord at any time. Hallelujah. You can prophesy. If you don't like something, you can change it. Your tongue has to be loose. Hallelujah. We must confess. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. No, you forgot. I, when I tell you praise the Lord, you can't say amen. It's like telling me, let it be so. When I say praise the Lord, you turn to your neighbor, tell them what God is. If he's a Beneza, if he's Jire, as in, say all those things. Are you able to rehearse? Do you remember how he saved you? How he healed you? Do you remember? Do you remember? Ah, don't look at me like that. Do you remember? We were not there when you are stuck, when you are in your sin. Some of us, it is good that the Lord saved you. Hallelujah. We'll be in trouble today. So you have a reason to praise God. And even if the finances are not here, even yourself, you are the reason. If you lack anything, look at yourself and say, God, I praise you. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to say praise the Lord and you'll, uh, let us stand. You know, this must be a culture. When, when I say praise the Lord, you have to open your mouth and praise him. It's an instruction. I'm not trying to tell you to say amen. Hallelujah. Amen is for finishing prayers. When I say praise the Lord, you do not finish praise the Lord. One as if you praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> no, no, no. As it, it has not been one thing. He has been like ten things. Okay, let me give you time. Can you think about ten things he has done? Because when I say praise the Lord, you'll say, as you walk to different people and just declare them, he is Ebenezer. He is my healer. Are we together? Now, now just think. Get, get ten things. Even if you failed in school, this one you cannot fail. Hallelujah. It is personal. You are the academician here. Hallelujah. You know what he has done for your life? Do you know ten things? I'm not asking for hundred. Ten. Hallelujah. Ten, Savior, Lord, Master, Ajire, as in only ten. Bonus if you bonus. Are you ready? Are you ready? Now, when I say praise the Lord, you'll walk to ten people and tell them the ten things. I don't know how it is, but you shall say that. Are you ready? Are you ready? Praise the Lord. Hey, hey, this God, a mighty God, a wonderful God, almighty God, always on the throne, King of kings, Lord of lords, that is what he is. We are praising him for who he is to the glory of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Say a good amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is my day for transformation. Say hallelujah. This is my day to be blessed. Say hallelujah. One as if you even the devil cannot stop me. Hallelujah. My enemies cannot stop me. They should have killed me before I got here. But now that I'm here, there's a shift to the glory of God. One as if you one as if you I see some of you returning and telling the devil, I am back. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are running, then you discover that you are too anointed to be despised. Say amen. One as if you 
See, when I was young, we had this habit uh, of throwing stones at cats. Uh, and we used to terrorize cats. Uh, and uh, this cat that when he saw, we were very lazy. We took good stones uh, and we threw and induct the stones. Uh, because we didn't like that, we took new stones uh, and the cat ran into a corridor. Now, when we went to the corridor, I don't know what the cat saw on the other side. Uh, but the cat turned around uh, and we said, we are not fools. Uh, when a cat turns around, you turn around. Hallelujah. This day, you are going to shift your operation in Jesus' name. What, you, what has been chasing you, you shall chase it. Say amen. God is ready to touch your life. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in his power? Do you believe in salvation? Do you believe in redemption? I want to lift up your hand and tell the Lord, I'm ready. Just make a prayer of faith. Tell your soul to be ready. Tell your mind to be alert. Because you shall never be the same again. You can't come to such a meeting and go back the same way. This is a meeting for your transformation to the glory of God. Let's clap to the Lord. Just appreciate him. Clap to the Lord. Clap to the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to have your seats in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bless the Lord. I want just to uh, adjust the mic slightly. Just give me a little bit good volume there. Just slightly. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Pastor Pancras is in town. Hallelujah. Now, it's only Pastor Silas who understand. Hallelujah. I said Pastor Pancras is in town. Okay, Kaini Chini, then I love to do it. Hallelujah. Because you're misbehaving. This is not, you know, there's something you call here honor. Hallelujah. Tell a neighbor honor. See your honor, you see your honor. One as if you. He said, when you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive the prophet's reward. He has come with the reward. Hallelujah. He, you know, if you do not react properly, he may think you don't need the reward. Hallelujah. One as if you one time King Saul, before he was a king, was just looking for donkeys uh, and met a man of God. In the man of God was his assignment. Hallelujah. So be careful when the man of God steps up. There's something for you to the glory of God. Somebody say amen. Put your hand on it and say, today I shall not be the same again. In the name of Jesus. Now, in this hour, not take so much time to bring to us the servant of God all the way from... Uh, uh, Eldoret, hallelujah. He landed, he did not come, hallelujah. When people land, you know, we, we made sure if he had not connected to God, we took him a little bit nearer to God, hallelujah. So I'm sure even then, <laughs> so be ready, be ready to the glory of God. But this is such a wonderful friend, I've known him for many years consistency and one thing I love about him is the alignment I, I believe in the word of God that has the power to change me transform me and elevate me and the same thing and he has taken time he has been fashioned for such a time as this and has become a part of the journey that we take the friends who support us when they are out there and come in when you need anything one as if you is a man that me and my wife honor so much and respect and I've seen the journey of his ministry and always enjoy to follow him hallelujah so I bring to you a man even when i sit there i feel encouraged i feel shifted to the glory of god are you ready to receive the man of god are you ready are you ready are you really ready ask your neighbor are you ready one as you know conference must be conference hallelujah ask your neighbor are you ready and tell the neighbor it's okay to be a noise maker today hallelujah they told you to be quiet they, they were mistaken you are a child of god when your sound goes out you are transforming your atmosphere. Put your hands together as you bring the servant of God all the way from Eldoret to Nairobi with the love of Christ in Jesus' name. Glory to God in the highest. Can we appreciate the Lord with a proper clap? If you love Jesus, you can do a better shout. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Please, you may have your seats in God's presence. Wow. When I was here last year, things were different. When I've come here, things have upgraded. Even the oil in your spiritual father is on another level. Please help me to celebrate none other than your spiritual authority, your father, Bishop Andrew Young. Clap to the Lord and celebrate this wonderful man of God. 
Some these things have gone high. Level may change. It wasn't like this while I was away. Amen. Eh, mambo ni mawili. Ya kwanza level imepanda. Ya pili kusema ukweli, bishop uko kwa level lingine. There is evident oil. Evident oil. I've really missed you people and happy new year. Uh, it's exciting to be back here. Uh, and indeed, like I've said, things have changed. So I'm just imagining what will happen next year. I remember there was one Paul here with a particular camera here that made me suffer. Amen. A preacher like me likes walking around. I suffered within this space. Yeah, because if I disappeared, they would hear my voice and assume I'm like Jesus. They can only hear the sound, but not tell where I'm coming from. Praise the Lord. But God has indeed made it possible for me to be back here. And uh, it's quite an honor just to be permitted to be here. I do not take it lightly. Pastor, thank you so much for just allowing me to come back and to be a blessing to God's people. Uh, I know Pastor Zaum is not here. I've been told that there is something that she had to attend to. But please, once again, would you help me to also appreciate your spiritual authority, your mother, even in absentia. Let's appreciate the Lord for her. I believe that she's watching and it's good to always make sure that the pastor's wife is highly honored. I carry greetings from Eldred, which I hope you receive. Amen. Enough of them. Please partake of them in Jesus' name. Mnaona bado na verse weta. Mujue ni metoka pali pa baridi ni kakutana tena na ingine. Bishop alikuwa na niyambia last year kulikuwa na mingi. Lakini this year simbaya kajoto kamekuja. I think God is answering prayer. Glory to God. I have a lot uh, that I would want us to be able to attend to and I believe that God is going to be able to help us. Let's pray even as we begin. Father, I ask of you to glorify yourself. This began yesterday and I believe that God, the alignment in which you have already put in the heart of your man servant as you permitted this conference to be, you will continue it even as I stand here today. And so, Lord, I come under the same grace and cloud that you put in your servant, Bishop Young. And I pray that, God, the agreement in which we will pick up will permit the flow of your will to break out in edifying the saints, both those that are here and even those that will be watching. I pray that, God, your word will have a free course and that it will be glorified. So use me as you so much will and let it be that your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name. Can we shout a good amen? amen? Praise the Lord. Joshua chapter number one. Quickly let us go there. Joshua chapter number one. I came with some materials. <coughs> a book that I've been able to do. There's even another one. But that other one <coughs> is actually here with me. I will be launching it on Monday. I have actually invited your bishop to be a part of that. Uh, on Monday there's a program I usually do. At least after every two months in Nairobi. Uh, and... Uh, I'll be doing it this coming Monday. I'll be having a guest minister, Apostle Joseph Butali, coming just to minister and at the same time to help me to launch the material that God has been able to put in my heart. Writing is part of what I am passionate about because I believe in investing in generations. And I'm also convinced that books are mantles. Amen? I said again, books are mantles. Yeah, that we are actually able to pass on to generations. So I've been able to do two of them, but one that is here, the other one that we are going to be launching, this one I actually launched recently back in Eldred. It's called Laws That Govern Intercession. I'd intended to go ahead and actually share about it at the end of the sermon, but I feel I should just be able to introduce it in advance. Maybe I will repeat it at the end, or Bishop himself will come and also emphasize more about it. But I want to say that this book is one of those books that is a must read. Uh, there are only about 14 of them. <coughs> there were 15. One of them uh, is for Bishop that I'd already prepared for. Uh, and I want you to all make an effort and get a copy. Uh, I know most of the times whenever people talk of intercession, there is a mindset that it's a group of people that are gifted in the place of prayer. And uh, we know that they can cry a lot before God. They can pray a lot before God for several hours. They attend Kesha, uh, Keshas and stuff like that. But I want to change your mindset. And let me make it clear that everyone that is born again is called to the ministry of intercession. Can I hear an amen? amen? Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor you are an intercessor. If you're a father, it means that you actually have children. You have no option but to pray. 
If you have, um, you are a mother, you have no option but to pray. If you are a husband, women are some of the most complicated people. And you have a ministry of prayer. I hope you are hearing what I'm trying to say. If you are a wife, you have been called to be a helper. You are compared to the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit is an intercessor. So you are called to intercede. That man, if he fails, God will blame you as a wife. His success is pegged on your ability to also intercede on his behalf. Oh, I hope you, you, come on, give me an amen. So I really want you to make an effort, get this material. I have been able to mention five laws. I've spoken about the law of watching, the law of decree, the law of holiness, and there are others that I've also been able to mention. I've explained that we are called to intercession. There are several uh, topics that are actually mentioned in this particular book. And I would really encourage that you get it. One pastor was able to get it. Even the time when I was actually starting to announce it before we launched it, he ordered for his copy. And just the other day, he was actually telling me, Pastor, this one, I'm going to start teaching it in my church. I want to tell you. I said, that is actually the reason why the books are available. So please make an effort. They are only 14. So if you can, purchase them. They are only going for 1,000 Kenyan shillings. Uh, go read them. Let them edify. There's a place where I've explained certain reasons why we make intercession. For example, one, your destiny requires intercession. You can never arrive in your destiny or you can never birth your destiny without intercession. Secondly, generations attached to you need intercession. Come on, give me an amen. And thirdly, your territory cannot do without intercession. Paul said men ought to pray everywhere. Okay, so we are not just called to pray, we are called to pray everywhere. There's a reason the Bible mentions the word everywhere. Because places or territories have altars. So one of the things that God did when he was actually speaking to the children of Israel, he made it clear to them that when you will arrive in the promised land, make sure you break the altars. Uproot the grooves. Why? Because the territories that you're entering in have spirits that dominate over it. Even when Jesus told the apostles that when the Holy Ghost will come upon you, you will receive power. He had to mention it clearly that the reason for the power is territorial takeover. He says you will receive power to be my evidences, my witnesses in Jerusalem territory, Judea territory, Samaria territory, the uttermost parts of the world. All of this was territorial. I hope I'm making sense right here. So his idea was to make it very clear that you have to understand that God wants you to go into territories in order to make God become the one that reigns there. For the heavens, even the heavens belong to God. But the earth he has given to the sons of men. God can never come on earth without an invite. In the affairs of men, God has to be invited. He says in Daniel chapter 4 and verse 17 that this matter is by the decree of the watchers. And the demand of the word of the holy ones. So there are people we call watchers. And there are people we call holy ones. Watchers make decrees. Holy ones make demands. Daniel 4.17. And then it continues. It says that the living may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men. Did you hear what I just said? Daniel 4.17. That the most high rules. But how does God rule? He rules by the decree of the watchers. And the demand of the word of the holy ones. He says that he rules in the kingdom of men so that he may give it to whom so ever he will. Now the idea that I'm trying to bring about is that if God will be able to affect Kenya, we are going to be having something that they are claiming to be nani nani on Thursday. And I remember one particular person was asking me the question, the pastor, how can we be able to... battery the battery seems to be go or is it behind there so the person was asking me the question the pastor it was actually in sitam i was ministering last year uh, and the question was i mean it was last week rather on friday uh sitam in eldoret so the question was pastor how can we be able to pray do we pray for the gen z uh, that whatever they are propagating can continue or do we pray for the government how do we pray and i gave a simple answer my answer was from james chapter number three the bible says it's a wisdom that is earthly that is sensual and devilish, and that is self-centered. Have you ever read that scripture? It pursues its own. Then it says, and there's a wisdom that is from above, that is first peaceable, secondly pure, and then it continues by saying that it has a result that is of righteousness. 
So what I explained to the people, I said, if you notice, when the Gen Zs began to do what they were doing, it was uh, they, were, they, they were representing a cry of the common monainchi. So it's not just a Gen Z. They were literally representing a cry that was hidden in the hearts of the normal citizen in the nation of Kenya. And they were coming to address three things to be more specific. One of them was corruption. That is one of the reasons why they were actually permitted to come in. Secondly, tribalism. If you notice, they can never, there can be no claim whatsoever that these young people have come in because of a tribal alignment. Because I, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm in Eldred. And in Eldred, we also had them manifesting. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? And thirdly, not only that, but you will notice that when they were coming into play, they were also coming to address the political focus in our nation. Because if you notice, during the time of Moi, Moi was able to make Kenyans become very political. And by the time, any time you look at a Kenyan, one of the things that intrigues them when they are watching news is politics. If there's no politics on news, if those of you remember during the time of Moi, then you will feel there's no politics whatsoever. And so even after Moi's time of uh, uh, tenure, you will discover that if Raila will not speak, we will feel like nothing happened. If Ruto or Uhuru doesn't speak, I mean, we always wait for political manifestation. And so you will notice that when they came in, no one was able to stand up and say that there was a political leader who was able to instigate this. It just began in a strange way. But while that was important, over time, if it was not covered, and if you notice this, with proper intercession, it has become very self-oriented. There's a mindset of believing that we are the ones who have done it. So you will realize there's a lot of intrusion in between. And what is happening to us? If we are not careful, we will go back to the book of Judges, where the Bible says everyone did as he wanted. Because there was no king to rule amongst them. Yes, while we have a need to raise an outcry, we also have to understand that we have to honor authority. That is something that has to be in place. Come on, I wish I had an amen right here. In scripture, or Romans chapter number 13, it talks about authority that it has been assigned for our good, not for our evil. And so in as much as we may disagree with certain things, and yes, the reason for this particular revolution, if I would call it so, is to contend uh, for the destiny of our nation and to raise an outcry to deal with factors like tribalism, corruption, and to realign what politics ought to be. I mean, if you do a proper search of the definition of politics according to the dictionary, you'll be very amazed. First definition is simple. It's exactly what we are seeing, where somebody uses masses to amass self-interest or to drive selfish interest. So that means if I have an influence over a group of people, I'm able to move them to go ahead and, and or bring me into power, but the idea is to advance my own interest. There was one politician who has been doing a podcast. It was public, so I can say it. He's your own senator here in Nairobi, Sifuna. And he was hosting Jirongo. And while he was doing so, he was explaining, I, I don't know why I have to go into this. He was explaining this. He said very clearly, he said, politics his heart was to make sure he fights for his people but he said the moment he walked into the political scenario the systems he met he said for real he knew very well none of them is geared in favoring or helping the nation it is all geared for selfish interest all of it is geared for selfish interest this was Sifuna who was explaining that that means that we have many politicians who actually have a will, a good will, an intent to even born again. They really have a desire to advance their political, I mean their constituencies or the various counties that they're presenting. But the moment they go in, what they are meeting will completely corrupt them. Even if they don't want, they are forced to move in a direction they never wanted. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? And for real, if we will have a change, this revolution was necessary. Problem is, without intercession, then it will become the wisdom of the, of the, that is earthly. It will be more self-oriented. Without intercession, it will have a wrong influences. And we've seen a lot of infiltration which has damaged our nation. So instead of moving forward, we are going backwards. Come on, give me an amen right here. Yes, they were addressing the right things, but we have been missing. That's why we need intercession flip side looking at the government you will discover also on the other side on the political sphere if we don't make intercession they will keep on still making decision based on political perception oh come on give me an amen yeah in politics what do you do you reward those that are actually your own are you hearing what i'm trying to say in politics what do you do you consider people that actually are yes people you need them to support your ideas 
You don't need anyone to critique you. And, and let, let's agree, in leadership, if everyone is a yes man, you are not going anywhere. Good leadership is that you have to have people who are thinkers and people that sometimes can challenge. The Bible says, if you've read this in the book of Proverbs, it says, whoever presents his matter seemeth wise until another challenges it. It's in the book of Proverbs. So in leadership, you will always need people. Definitely, you know their hearts are loyal. You know they are humble. I hope I'm making sense. But you also know at the same time, they are honest enough to share with you the truth. Honest enough. They are not careless with how they talk to you. But they are honest enough to raise concerns to you. But if everyone around you, are you hearing me? Has to say yes, because if you cough, <laughs> I will not mention his name. He trends a lot also. Are you hearing me? But what am I bringing about? Intercession is what can help us, even this Thursday that we are talking. We don't need to begin to expect that there will be chaos. There is a way we can begin to make decrees. There is a way we can make demands. There is a way we can watch in the spirit. To an extent that everything will be governed by God. It says this matter is by the decree of the watchers. And the demand of the word of the holy ones. That the living may know. That the most high rules in the kingdom of men. We can bring God down. Please, I wish I had a better amen. So that's one reason why this material is there. Please understand, we don't write just for the sake of writing. If there's anything, we write what God commands us to because there are mandates that we have. And one of the things that I believe that God has given me as a mandate is to be able to see that an army of intercessors are well equipped with materials that can help them to rise and to fulfill God's will in our time and generation. Can I hear a proper amen? So please use the ones that are there. If in case we will need more, I'm here. We will see how we can be able to order more. But I really would desire that you make use of the material. Joshua 1 and verse number 8. We are going to begin our journey. And uh, trust God that God will be able to help us. Uh, Joshua 1 and verse 8. It says, and this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You know, I'm just looking at the screen and I'm just seeing the way you people have advanced. Amen. The only problem set up this screen is a very stingy fellow because it is cutting words here so i have to look like this amen praise the lord yeah this book of the law i'm just trying to say that so we are amen this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth because you shall but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Amen. Now, those of you that have been able to follow the heart of your spiritual father, you will discover that there are three things that he majors on, particularly when he does these conferences. Faith, family, and finances. Uh, without a doubt, these are three areas that every human being is affected by. You will realize that if somebody prospers financially but is affected in terms of their family, still their prosperity is not complete. If somebody prospers in terms of progressing in their family, but financially they're not doing well, you will realize that their marriage is still shaky. If somebody is also doing well financially, but their faith is not intact, in as much as they can give money, then we know that their, their lives in terms of eternity is not secure. One of the things that I've always said is that I've always God can be able to raise up multi-millionaires or even billionaires. And we're not just talking of Kenyan shillings. We are talking of God raising people in American dollars. And yet at the same time, their quality of faith is on another level. Every time you would ask them anything concerning how they became a success, they would always refer back to God. God helped me. There was one rich fellow whose son was born again. And while they were about to go out for some business, uh, the father was walking out and he happened to call one of the servants asking him, where's my son? And he told him, well, he told me that he had to go and pray. The father religiously said that that is good. And so he waited for him because he thought that in prayer it will help. So he waited five minutes, a young boy didn't come out. 30 minutes, the young boy did not come out. One hour, the young boy didn't come out. That young boy came out that two hours later. Do you know what the father did? The father called him aside. He looked at him and he told him, Kwani ume kwana shida mingi sana. Is it that you have a lot of problems that you have never told me? Do you know why? Because according to the father, prayer is a place of releasing problems. The young boy told him, no. 
I have been having time with God. I love God and that's why I gave him the two hours. I knew we were not in a hurry. You know many people always consider that prayer should be a place where you offload all your issues. So if you go to the prayer mountain, there are two major prayer points. Number one, give me a wife or give me a husband. Oh, I thought I had an amen right here. If not so, under the same, Lord, correct that man, break his head. He is not hearing me. Lord, change that woman. She's a typical devil. Are you hearing me? And then prayer point number two, if not for family, somebody is busy praying, breakthrough. God, give me breakthrough. Those, go to any prayer mountain. Night, rarely will you ever see somebody going to a prayer mountain to fast for three days to thank God. You will never see that. You will never see somebody saying that we are going to fast because we are believing God that Japan will encounter God. That is a rare affair. And that's one of the reasons why we need to begin to change. I believe that prayer is a place of intimacy. That's a fundamental, fa I mean, foundation of all prayer. It's a place where you're supposed to interact with, a, with God. A place of koinonia, communion. The rest is given birth to. Intercession is given birth to communion. Please, I hope, did I hear an amen? Yeah, if you believe that you are an intercessor, unaniwa mbi hapa ti life, me, me God has just been, I mean me, I'm just an intercessor for church. And I tell people, a true intercessor operates with burdens. What, what I mean is, is, that's one of the law I mentioned here. What I mean is that when they contact God, it is, they don't just pray for things because they know. It is what God wants to be prayed for that they pray for. So as they, when they can wake up in the morning and before they do the normal prayer, they just wake up. They know God is telling them, pray for this. And they begin to pray for that. that because their intimacy confirms the directives of God. I wish I had an amen right here. So the point I'm bringing about here is that these three factors of life, faith, family, and finance are critical. Now, over these days, based on also what your bishop has been able to set as a standard from yesterday, allow me, I will be speaking about wisdom for significant progress. And I will find a way to bring about these three aspects uh, within this conference under this particular topic, wisdom for significant progress. I will begin by mentioning that progress is the will of God. Progress is the will of God. When God spoke to Joshua, he made it clear to him that the purpose as to why the book of the law will not depart from your mouth and you will need to meditate on it is because of two factors. One, that you may make your way prosperous. Now, please underline the word prosperous there and say after me, say prosperous. Please say it like you are in church and international. So to say, say again, prosperous. That word prosperous, we all know, is from the root word prosperity. Now, we all must agree that prosperity does not deal per se with money. The Bible is clear in 3rd John chapter number 3 and verse number 1. 3rd John 3 and verse 1. He says, Beloved, I wish above all that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. 3rd John verses Number one, it is only one chapter. Third John verse number one. Beloved, I wish above all that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Now, when John was talking about prosperity, you will notice that he wasn't necessarily majoring on money. I've always heard people talking about prosperity preachers. And every time they're talking about that, what they're actually majoring on is people that basically zero in concerning money. How they dress, the flamboyancy of their church. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? And everything that has to do with excellence. So if you will look at it, it focus more, more, focuses more on natural things. That is not the definition of prosperity. I would rather that you don't say this prosperous, this prosperity preachers. You say these money preachers. Because prosperity doesn't focus on money. Money is a result of prosperity. Uh, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Money is a result of prosperity. So if we were to define prosperity, then we need to go into it deeper. Because when you read the Bible, given, given an example, Proverbs 28 and verse 13. Okay? If you just look at Proverbs 28 and verse 13, this is what it says. It says, whoever does not confess his sin shall not prosper. Now, if sin can deny you prosperity, then we have to discuss prosperity. Please give me an amen right here. And he says, whoever confesseth his sin, look at that. Whoever covers his sin shall not prosper. And whoever confesses his sin and forsakes shall receive mercy. Define the word mercy is a word favor. So which means prosperity is hinged around mercy and favor. And by research, please write this down if you're writing. 95% of life's is bound on favor. 
I want to repeat what I said. 95% of life's progress is hinged on favor. 5% is hard work. 5% is strategic thinking. 95% who likes you matters. You can be intelligent, but if you have no favor, there is no way you're going. You can have capital. Let's even talk of financial capital. But if you have no favor with those you want to trade with, you are going nowhere. 95% of life is, or in progress in life is a hinged, or let me even say prosperity is a hinged on favor. So when the Bible says whoever confesses, it's simply suggesting that righteousness and prosperity agree. Your alignment with God determines your prosperity. So the question is then what is prosperity? Prosperity is the grace that helps you to succeed in everything that you do. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Prosperity is a grace that enables you to succeed in everything that you do. So succeeding in business, and that is that grace that is helping you, that is prosperity. Where your marriage is taking place in success, that is prosperity. That is why John says, I wish above all that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul. So he's addressing three areas. He's talking about physical prosperity. Oh, come on, somebody needs to talk to me here. He's talking about, I mean, he's talking about financial prosperity, physical prosperity, and then he's talking about mental prosperity. So he's very aware that if a person can think well, then that person is prosperous. If a person can be healthy, that person is prosperous. I wish I had an amen right here. So all the others has to do with material prosperity. All of it are basically results. I, if you hear me say, I hear you. I'm really trying to go slow before we take off. I know some of you will still say I am fast. But please try. We are under the anointing so we can catch things faster. Are you hearing me right here? I'm not yet fast. I'm only really trying to control myself. Now, go back to Joshua. He says, beloved, I wish I, I mean, no, sorry. He says this, the book of the Lord will not depart so that you may make your way prosperous. And then he says that you may have good success. Now, that second part, he actually speaks about good success, suggests that all success might not be good. Because if there is good success, ladies and gentlemen, then there must be bad success. We are now back in Joshua 1 and verse 8. Please, if you hear me say, I hear, I hear. I want to repeat what I said again. If there can be good success, then the truth is there must also be bad success. So the fact that we get a person giving a testimony and coming to tell us here, God has opened a door for me, I had a breakthrough. We need to research and confirm how the breakthrough came. Because you may have slept around to get the breakthrough. That is not good success. The fact that you stood here and told us that you got a tender and how God worked a miracle. And sometimes when we give testimonies, we want to attach to them. We need to do a search. How did you get that one million that you got? Because know whether you bribed to get the tender. Oh no, your amen is already disappearing. So if indeed you got the tender by favor, then we will say the factor of prosperity was working for you. When you say amen, the miracle is coming closer. No, no, no. I said when you say amen, the miracle is I did not say oh amen. I said when you say amen, the miracle is coming closer. So we have to understand, Joshua, when God is talking to him, he's simply suggesting to him that making your way prosperous and having good success is God's will for you. In other words, God wants you to progress. Listen, like I joked when I was standing earlier on, something that I recognized, this was not what I left last year. So I'm not so sure if by his grace that your man of God will invite me again. I'm not so sure whether we will still be on the same level. It might be a gorofa. We will be dealing with Nathan. No, are you understanding me? The point is what was there is not what is. Which means that we are seeing evident progress. So God's will, number one, is progress. Anyone that will try to tell you God is not for progress is a liar. We can prove it by nature that even as God's creation, God imparted in us the nature called growth. We don't make much effort to grow. It is within us. Even in the Old Testament, God was angry when a person never grew taller. Sazile mtu alikuwa nabakia kama likobe ama inspector mwala. Mungu alikuwa nakasirika. 
labda hiyo ndio itawashika hiyo unasema nini alikuwa anasema mtu kama huyu asikakuje kwa hekalu let not that man enter into my temple why he is going against the laws that i have created in his dna now it doesn't mean that god hates such people i'm trying to explain a point the point is in dnas of human beings god has invested in us capacity to grow so if nature if a plant is planted and it will grow it means everything that god has created has the capacity to progress so if you are not making progress then something in your life is fighting the will of god and over these three days we will have to raise our war cry whatever is not of god resisting your progress must be removed in the name of jesus because this year must be better than last year the month of august has just begun we should never compare it to the month of july the past six months are gone now we have the remaining six months we have to make a decision it will be better bigger and brighter something has to enlarge in our lives and destiny. testimonies have to be touched. if you believe it i need a shout of amen right here so one progress is the will of god number two the second thing that you have to understand about progress it must be pursued intentionally so while progress is god's will you must pursue it intentionally so the same way a child requires to be fed oh i thought i'm in church today a child requires to be given a right environment for growth is the same way your prosperity is in you according to god's will but you must intentionally feed it I like your pastor for one reason. He doesn't speak to you like local people. He deals with you internationally. And that's why I said I'm not so sure what will happen next year. Probably we'll be dealing with walls. That are, listen, I never came here using a bus. I never drove here. Uh, like he said, I landed. Did you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So now the point I'm bringing about, look at the way he's thinking and the way I'm now looking at you, that's the same way. The point I'm bringing about is that he's always trying to push you people to the next level. Are you getting my idea here? Now, if we will progress, we must be intentional. There must be something in us that we sit down to always do analysis. We always assess. Are we in the same place? Did we make strides? Are we stuck? Or are we moving forward? Are we regressing? Or what is wrong with our destiny? If you cannot make an assessment of where you are, you cannot make an effort of progressing. One of the scriptures that moves me a lot is Luke 16. Now, just write it down. In Luke 16, we have an account of a wicked steward who was stealing the money. Luke 16, are you hearing me? Stealing the money of his boss. Are you still hearing me? When the boss got to know, this is what scripture says. After the boss got to know that he was stealing, do you know what the wicked man did? He spoke to himself. Do you know what he said? He said, to dig, I cannot. To beg, I refuse. I don't like the way you're answering me. <laughs> okay, we could go there so that you could believe. Look at what he says. So the master commended the angel. Go, go back, go back, sir. Go, go up there, go up there. Let's look at verse number six, somewhere around there. Okay, uh, uh, look at this. Uh, uh, go up again. I want you to look for that part which it says to dig and to beg. I want you to look for that particular verse. Verse number, verse number three. Please go there. And this is how he spoke to himself. He knew his level. Nakajifikiria, akajipanga. Alijiambia mi kuna vitu siyezi fanya. Verse number three, please, sir. Verse number three. Look at what he says. He says, then the steward said within himself, he began to address himself. What shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship from me. I cannot dig and I am a sh You need to read it in different translations. In one translation it says, to dig, I cannot. To beg, I refuse. <laughs> oh, I wish I had an amen right here. You know, there must be a level where you reach, where you are tired of always borrowing money from Timiza, Fuliza, eh? Tala, eh? you know, of late to the Christian, you do not say, at make surprise na impesa. You, you are the one who will be surprised. You have to call a believer to ask them, eh, is your impesa okay? To confirm, because many Christians, right, not even Christians, Kenyans are suffering on their phones. I've not even talked about Kwa Jahazi. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? <laughs> so even if you send them credit in a Malizika. <laughs> Unamtumiata ya mia na kuambia, ay, ilijaribu. Unamuliza kwa ni nini, ilikuwa ukua jahazi ya 500. Hmm? So, you can't even help a Kenyan of late. You must reach this level where you talk like this man. To be. 
big, I cannot. Too big, I refuse. <laughs> I wish I had a better amen right here. That is where progress begins. You must be intentional. The guy addressed himself. And after I did that, immediately the verses that follow, he began to call everyone that ought. How much do you owe? 100? Write 50. How much? This? Write this. He was securing himself intentionally. Verse number 8, Jesus himself commended him. The Bible says he commended the unjust to what? Can you imagine? He was unjust, but even Jesus was happy about him. This is your season of progress. To stay single, I refuse. To marry, I accept. When you don't say amen, then you're not yet there. I thought I had a good amen right here. To be broke, I refuse. To borrow, I refuse. To give, I am ready. To distribute, I am ready. Man of God. There was a pastor who was speaking in a conference. He made me laugh until I prayed for myself. I laid hands on my Kenyan head. I said, my God, I beg for such an anointing. He said he went for a conference like the way I've come here. And he went together with some of his sons. And so he said when they, he was ministering, he noticed that that church was not finished. And he had asked the pastor, how much do you need? He told him 14 million. When he told him 14 million, the pastor just felt a burden as he ministered that he wanted people to raise money. So he said he wanted a group of people to each give 2 million, 2 million. Do you know when some people were dragging their feet to come, he said one of his sons came to him. He whispered. He said, oh God, you have finished me. He said, I don't understand. He said, just wait. He went, he came back. Remember how much did they want? 14 what? Million. The guy came back. No, 4 million. It was 4 million. The guy came back and then he said, sir, there were bags. When I think Ghana must go bags. They came with bundles of them. He said, sir, it's 16 million that is inside there, but I beg you not to tell. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> How much do they need? 4 million. The guy brought 14 million. The pastor said, you mean you had all this money in your car and we were driving that? He said, yes, sir. I usually drive with money because I usually want to know what God is saying. I drive ready because I don't know what he will ask. So he said, I was waiting for him. He told me, give 16. I said, I'm willing. I prayed for myself. I said, God, give me people that will be driving with money. They are ministries to be asking God, so what do you want me to do with this 20 million? What do you want me to do with this 2 million? You see the problem with you? You look like a shilling on air. And I thought I'm preaching to millionaires. Where are my millionaires right here? Uh, no, millionaires need to shout a better amen right here. That imagine your work is to be praying. You wake up in the morning, Father, I thank you for today. Please lead me to which church I should build. Show me who I should build the next house for. I wish I had an end right here. May you receive that anointing right here. And if you receive it, you need to shout a loud amen right here. After that, I prayed for my So he kept on telling his son, so you, you mean to tell me there's more money here? He said, yeah, I keep on driving with money in my trunk. Kwa mkenya kama we ungekuwa meifinya kwa mpesa. Na sayo mpesa yako imesha kuambia live, imekupatia limit. You can receive 500,000 only. Na siju mbona pasa ni lazima utu explain ye. Pesa ikiingia limit na punguka. Uliwa inotisi yo? Pesa ikipunguka limit na panda. I don't know. Okay, you'll get it tomorrow. I know maybe I'm jawai kwa kona hiyo. Na wengine hata stauliza limit yako. But what I'm bringing about, progress must be intentional. So it is God's will, but it must be intentional. Any time that you ever want to move into the next level, you must understand. Amos 3 and verse number 3. Amos 3 and verse number 3. It says two cannot walk together unless they be in agreement. Amos 3.3. 3. So God wants you to agree with him. So it is his will, but he's saying agree with me. Lift your right hand. Say, oh God, I agree with your will. Come on, lift up that right hand of power. Say again, oh God, I agree with your will in my life. Now write this down. Progress calls for two things. Number one, it calls for strategy. And secondly, empowerment. Anytime that you are talking of progress, there are two things that you have to deal with. The first one is strategy. And the second one is empowerment. Strategy is necessary in progress because see determines the timeline you will walk into your progress 
For example, if you receive the right strategy, you will discover that what takes 10 years can be achieved in one year. What, let me repeat it again. Two things progress calls for, strategy and empowerment. You need strategy because it is strategy that is able to shorten the distance. Do you understand me? You only need one idea. There is a man of God who wrote a book called Ideas Rule the World. If you have ever noticed, one of the most superior capital you can have in this world is ideas. Money is good capital, but it is one of the least capital among five. There are five capitals. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Money is number five. Number four is what we call people. People are capital. You need networks if you will succeed. Please give me an amen. I said again, you need networks if you will, you will succeed. Sorry, that is number, number, number four rather is intellectual. So, yes, sorry, people capital. Number three is what we consider as the aspect of intellectual capital. And this is where the aspect of ideas come into play. Please, if you hear me say, I hear you. Shout it loudly like you believe. Say again, I hear you. Uh, number two is what we call faith. Faith is capital by itself. There are places you reach in life and you can tell this mountain. It is not wisdom that will shift it. Yes, I, I thought I had an amen right here. You can tell everyone that should help me cannot be able to move this mountain. I know the president, but this situation cannot move. We've just lost one of the greatest generals in Kenya. A man that every one of us honors, a voice of God, Bishop Alan Kiuna. But many of you may not know the amounts of money that they spent when he went to America. The only good thing that we celebrate is his legacy. But let me tell you something. There is a level money cannot be able to handle. Networks cannot. They gave the testimony of some of their sons that they never spent money. Sons were the ones that were doing it. So there's a place people cannot, have you ever been in a crisis with your wife? You came to pastor and I'm not saying you do that. You knew this crisis is not solved. You saw your parents is not solved. You saw everyone. There is a place you know it has to be ropatakatika. Faith is the only dimension. You know this mountain has to be addressed. I wish I'm preaching to somebody right here. You know if God does not come through, this thing will fail. You know very well that God, you know this thing. If you don't intervene, I am dead already. I challenge you that you must understand. But let me go back to intellectual capital. He wrote a book called Ideas Rule the World. And when he was doing so, he was trying to challenge people. That there are places you go to. People have money, but they do not have ideas. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? There are programs like Shark Tank. Programs like KCB Lions. If you ever watch them. If you didn't, at least I'm mentioning them. You will take the time to watch them. They have been on NTV. Uh, KCB Lions has been on KTN. Uh, this other one called Shark Tank has been on. Uh, you can even watch them on YouTube. You have billionaires on Shark Tank. You have people like Mark who is a billionaire. There are others who are, are multi-millionaires. All of them seated and they are waiting for people to come in present their ideas and then after that decide to partner with them or buy the ideas because they know they have the money but they know there are limitations they have so there's something which we usually call uh, what capital uh, 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 income there's what we, uh, an income that enters with silence you don't work passive income and this is what they are enjoying they have the money but they don't have the ideas so they buy your idea you work for them and it is passive income for them they increase in the billionaire status because of others now what if you had both money and ideas what can't you become oh i thought i had an amen right here please i need a better amen right here the point I'm bringing about is that there is a wisdom you can use. The Bible says, I am the Lord, your redeemer, that leadeth thee and teacheth thee to make profit. Oh, I wish I'm preaching to people here. Isaiah 48 and verse 17. He says, I am the Lord that leads you. How does God lead you? He gives you ideas. I wish I had somebody I can preach to right here. How does God lead you? He gives you thoughts. Everyone believes ya kwamba ukiomba. Alafu nambi wa kwamba ukiomba nga hivi ndo unasikia mungu. Siyo kama mlikuwa kama mimi. Tunafundishu wa kwamba unaomba. Kitu ya kwanza unamaliza. Alafu after umemaliza kulekcha mungu. Unanyamaza for five minutes. After you've lectured God for one hour. You keep quiet for five minutes. Alafu you wait for a voice that speaks like Santa Claus or the baritone voice. My son. 
God never talks like that. You'll be very amazed that the time Ulingia Maombi, Kamoko sensitive, God began to put ideas in you. Sazila ulianza kuomba ukiambia mungu, God, how shall I handle this? God begins to tell you, talk to so and so. You never had a voice. You saw pictures. You had an idea. Kai, I wish I'm preaching. Am I talking to somebody right here? Yes, that's how we move to the next level. And God, one of the highest way that God speaks is through your renewed mind. He talks to you through your thoughts. Don't tell me it is only the silent voice in my heart. No. Every time you are even seated down, you are watching TV. Something will pass by the TV and an idea will hit you. Begin this. That is God speaking to you. God doesn't need you to squeeze yourself for five minutes to talk to you. God can speak to you even when you are in the matatu. You are seated down and some idea flashes through your mind. And all of a sudden you begin the idea which brings you out of debts. Madenu mekwanayo. It makes you a multi-millionaire. People are looking at you and they are wondering how did you succeed? It wasn't witchcraft. It was God craft. You enjoyed the ideas of God. God gave, oh my God, I wish I'm preaching to somebody right here. God gave you ideas. God showed you what to do. Progress requires strategy. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. Oh, I wish I'm preaching to somebody here. What does he do? He will lead me beside the still waters. He will make me lie down on greener pastures. If God is leading you, it is greener pastures you will enjoy. If God is leading you, it is still waters you will enjoy. That even though I may walk through the valley, of the shadow of the I will fear no for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they will comfort me you will prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies my cup runneth over my head you will anoint with oil and you will give me two bodyguards surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my and I will dwell I will dwell so when you keep on prospering you can come to church more I would rather come to church when I am rich than be coming to church when I am broke. The desire. My God, I feel I'm preaching to somebody already. You will be coming to church because you already have everything working for you. Your business is working. Your marriage is working. Like what the Bible says, enter into his courts, his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. You are already thanking God because he has answered you. You are coming with rejoicing because you know God has already, I prophesy over people that are under the sound of my voice. May God give you strategy for progress. If you receive it, you need to shout a louder, amen, right here. Slap three neighbors and tell them, neighbor, there is a strategy. There is a strategy. There is a strategy. I cannot be stuck. I refuse to be stuck. I deny to get stuck. How can I carry God and be stuck? The devil is a liar. In God, there are ideas. The Bible says, thou art the, the life, the fountain of life. And in thy light shall we see light. I can never be stuck. I can never be broke. God is showing me the way to go. He will tell me invest here. He will tell me talk to so and so. Progress requires a that one direction from God can make you a multi-millionaire. One direction from God can bring you out of poverty into a place of dining with kings. One direction from God can break generational struggle and open up generational blessings. One direction from God can unlock the favor of God like you. May you receive divine strategy. May you receive a leading from God that will change you. May God give you ideas. May God show you a dream. May God speak to you over something. May God give you a strategy. I don't know who it is I am preaching to. Whether you are here or you are watching us, there is a strategy that will pull you out of where you are and raise you into the place of uncommon favor. I see the hand of God coming over you. You will no longer stay where you are. God is about to raise you from one level of glory to the other level of glory. 
God is about to raise you from one level of favor to the next. I break every struggle that you have ever had in your life. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to give you an inheritance. May the word of God, the direction of God, the strategy of God bring you to the inheritance that belongs to your destiny. If you receive it, I need you to shout aloud. Hallelujah right here. Slap another neighbor. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I can never be stuck. Oh, I refuse. Look at somebody else. I need you to preach to somebody. Tell them, neighbor, I can never be stuck. No, I can never. Turn to another one. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I can never. I can never. I can never. I, I feel the preacher can. I can never, never, never. I can never. Not today. I know I may have struggled in January. I know I may have struggled in February. I know I had debts. My Dennis I know I struggled with rent. I know I struggled to pay school fees. I know last time was difficult but the devil is a liar I have God who is Alpha yet he's Omega he's a God of divine wisdom he's a God who leads in places we have never walked into before he's a God who can show me where my resources are he's a God who can direct me to where my helpers are he's a God who can lead me to where my miracles are I can never 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 be stuck whoever I am preaching to and whoever is under the sound of my voice there is a strategy God is about to release to you right now that will unlock your doors of labor that will bring you to the harvest of your sacrifices God does not forget the toil of his people God does not forget the labor of his people this is a God we are preaching about who walked into the boat of Peter now can be a Peter cast your nets into the deep one word from Jesus one direction from Jesus gave Peter a net breaking miracle I don't know who it is under the sound of my voice but whatever the Lord will say to you may you begin to do it whatever the Lord will lead you to do may you obey that sound obey that voice obey that direction if you receive it I need you to clap your hands and shout yes Lift your hands for one minute. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right here. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Pray in the I can never be stuck. No, not when I carry the wisdom of God. No, not when the light of God is upon me. I can never be stuck. No. Not when the voice of God leads me. No, I can never be stuck. Not when the strategies of God are written on my head. I can never be stuck. Never can I be stranded. My destiny is too large. My destiny is not small. Progress is my right. It is my portion. I walk in the fullness of what God has intended. I come into wealth. I come into abundance. I come into riches. I come into fulfillment of prophecy. I come into answers of prayers. For the Lord will lead me. The Lord will guide me. He will be my light in darkness. He will be the brightness of my day. The Lord will give me a strategy. A strategy to handle my wife. To handle my children. A strategy to handle my generation. A strategy to raise my business. A strategy to raise my children. A strategy to heal my condition. A strategy. The Lord will give me ideas. The Lord will open my mind and show me the way that I ought to go. There is a way in Jesus. There is a way in God. There is a direction in the Most High. I can never be stranded. I can never be stuck. No, never. I can never. I carry the wisdom of God. His counsel is upon my mind. His leading is upon my spirit. He leads me. 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 He leads me the Lord will guide me through it all the Lord will show me the way I should go I can never be stranded hey. 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 come on somebody open your mouth open your mouth and pray Oh, he's here, he's here. 
Masada la katalaba, endola kalima soka la mashaya, pela gani na la makari ya mabrato se la baka, inkara masombele bekari ya, yanda la bakandi la masoya. hands and bless his name. God is already here. There are things he's doing in somebody's life. Whoever you are, God is already opening up your heart to certain possibilities. His will is that you progress. Thank you Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Can you give the Lord a clap of praise right here? Come on, if you believe God is doing something, clap your hands together. Please, for one minute, just reduce it a little. Just lift your hands. Just pray in the Holy Ghost if you can. Just reduce it. I'll keep on playing, but slowly. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. I feel impartations of strategies. Impartations of strategies. Is that voice that is coming? Is that voice? Mm. Mm. Come on, come on. Don't desist of prayer. Just open your mouth and pray. As you're doing that intercession, something is being downloaded in your system. Something is being downloaded. Something is being downloaded. Something is being downloaded. Go ahead and receive it. Go ahead and receive it. His power is already here. Go ahead and receive it. Go ahead and receive it. Go ahead and receive it. Oh, masoka talika raba sombri de shalaba soka raba. Prenda la bakara ba sombri la bakari yamapra. Yenda la bakari ya maprato solo bo shalaba. Mm. Mm. Wewe ni mungu. Wewe ni mungu. Unajibu maombi. Unajibu maombi. Umwaminifu Umwaminifu Unajibu maombi Najibu maombi Wewe ni Mungu se wewe Come on let me hear you say Unajibu maombi Introduction is not done, but I think the plowing that has been done in this conference is already so high. If you're here, you've been feeling stuck in an area, and right now this word has been coming strong on your head. Lord, give me a strategy, and you've been feeling down, Lord. I want you just to come in front on this altar. Run in front right here. If you're one of those people that is saying, I need that release of the next strategy. Strategy for this next level of my progress. This next level calls for this. This next level. This next level calls for this. 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 This next level cal
this next level calls for this. 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 Lift up your hands as you're standing on this altar right now. There is already a release. There is already a release. There is already a release. Father, thank you. Lift up that right hand. Put your left hand on your head. This is what I hear the Lord saying. Lift up your right hand like you are ready. An antenna ready to receive. Right hand lifted. Left hand on your head. Right hand lifted. Left hand on your head. Lift it up high like an antenna ready to receive. I hear the Lord telling me there are some of you who have been having dreams coming on and off. In the dreams, that's where God has preferred to talk to you a lot. But sometimes you keep on forgetting and yet that was how God wanted to answer your prayer. Today, I want you to open your mind that by the time we will pray, that dream will now become stronger in your spirit. Some of you right here, God is about to scatter every form of depression because that is what is hindering his voice in your mind. You're being too anxious, too worried, too concerned. We want to pray that that thing will be lifted from your head. You cannot move to the next level with anxiety. It does not work. Anxiety chokes the voice of God. It frustrates his ability to speak to you. So we want to break that from you. Your dreams will be accurate for the dreamers. Those of you that God wants to give ideas that you will not have anxiety or worry in your spirit. As some of you, I feel there's something really putting you under great duress, pressure. God wants to sort it out. I hear him telling me to tell you that one of the things that he will do as a sign is that he will relieve you from some of them. He will relieve you from some of those pressures. There's a favor he will give you that will cause you to be amazed at what he will do. So Father, right now, I ask you to lay hands on your people. Are you ready to receive? I ask you to lay hands on your people. I break every form of confusion in dreams. Every form of forgetfulness. I come against it in the name of Jesus. For you have preferred to talk to them in dreams like you did to Jacob. You have preferred to do it as you did to Joseph. Lord, today I am asking you to make it clear for them. You know them, they are here. Let your hand be upon them in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. I am asking today that whatever tries to come in their dreams to hinder the clarity of direction, by this prayer, I stop it in the name of Jesus. And I open my mouth now, tonight, tonight, not even days coming, tonight, the Lord will bring a dream to you that will begin a journey of direction into your life. Whoever you are in that category, may you begin to receive this impartation. I said receive it now. Receive it now. I pray for everyone that is anxious that the enemy is pursuing with pressure and depression. I come against it now. In the name of Jesus, I dismantle that confusion. I dismantle that anxiety. I summon the peace that surpasses all understanding. Put your hands on your head. God is changing something. And I scatter fear. Satan, lose your hold. Depression, leave the people of God. Worry, get out in the name of Jesus. I pull down every thought. In fact, the Lord is telling me, some of you, you even have panic attacks at night because of it. By the authority of this prayer, I stop that thing in the name of Jesus. I now release over your life a fresh atmosphere. Receive it. Now lift up your hands, all of you. Receive that atmosphere. Lift up your hands. You can lift them up high. Receive a fresh atmosphere. Take it. Take that fresh atmosphere. Uh, there it is. Some of you are feeling heat in your hands. 
Unasikia ni kama mikono zinaungua that is a sign you are feeling like something is lifted from your head take it take it take it take it yes there's an anointing already moving right here take it take it take it take it take it somebody here you had anxiety mpaka kwa tumbo yako ulianza kusikia uchungu fulani because of the pressure i command your stomach to be healed i uproot every form of ulcer that is trying to build in your system out in the name of jesus i said out in the name of jesus i now release your healing take it in the name of jesus oh there is an anointing you know i feel like mikono yangu inainuliwa the lord is saying help us are coming take that anointing it is already here god is laying hands on somebody i don't need to lay hands on you it is flowing right here there is a fresh grace there is a fresh grace moving here oh i thank you father i thank you father receive it in the name of jesus there is a burning sensation a fire coming on somebody or oh, receive it receive it oh i'm taking time because god is doing it receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus that anointing will be the sign that god is already working receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus masaka tanima sopretonika ranta lakaria mapose katalima there's a relationship which has been troubled god is cutting off something here reta tanima sokoria maprato seda nintalika raba in the name of jesus receive i'm taking one more minute i'm releasing that and anointing that freshness receive in the name of jesus receive if you're watching us from wherever you are the same oil is moving receive in the name of jesus receive in the name of new energy new faith new strength to believe new capacity to fight again new capacity to fight again receive in the name of jesus oh blessed be your name Thank you Lord. It is done. Do you believe it? Give the Lord a clap right now. Hold on. Hold on. Dreamers, those of you that are in that first category, let me see your hands. Dreams. God has been speaking to you a lot through dreams. Lift your hands. Yeah. God will confirm his word in your lives. Yes, he will. Some of you he will even teach you through dreams you will recover time because of his direction those of you that have been in anxiety do you feel a release right now do you feel it yeah, god is doing it this conference was made to build you you are going to come out of here full of faith full of capacity to fight again whatever was stopping you will not stop you again do you hear what i'm trying to say it will not stop you will notice a grace on you you know elijah after he finished praying and sent a word to ahab that i hear the sound of abundance of rain do you know what the scripture says he says immediately after the servant confirmed of what he saw as a sign what did he do he told ahab keep go with your chariots but what did he do he guarded his own garments and fastened it on his loins and outran the chariots of ahab there's a speed you guys will begin to receive here. Do you understand me? You will receive it. And you will notice it. There's an energy you will have. You have never had this one. Yes, you will notice an energy. This was made for you, this conference. In Jesus' name. We will take time. Tomorrow we will have more prophetic time. Today we are just making an introduction. Is that okay? And we will build this thing. The Lord bless you. It is done in Jesus' name. Amen. You may go back in the precious name of Jesus. Glory to God. Please make an effort. Receive this book at the end of the service. Place an order for it. And the Lord will bless you. I love you all. We will see you tomorrow. Make sure you bring in a friend. Let this place be packed up. Let this conference bring a shift in this ministry. Can I hear an amen? amen. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I am the Samaritan woman. The whole city will gather because of me. Yeah. Every time an event like this happens, you may not be aware, apart from what we call spiritual edification and revival, one thing that we have to believe God for, the ministry, this is what God puts in the hearts of his servant, because these are sacrifices that you people are paying. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So we need to believe God that we will have broken this wall. Something new has to happen. 
Can I hear an amen right here? We have broken the wall. We are on another dimension. These are possibilities that can happen. God bless you. Thank you so much, Bishop. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. We're just starting. I want you to make sure you invite somebody tomorrow. Tell your neighbor tomorrow. I want us to be here by four because I want him to be up by, by five. Hallelujah. We get some good time. And we want sacrifice. I know we normally say, you know, Saturday you have to finish early because he's here until Sunday. So it's a continuation. And these are three days of sacrifice that will change and shift your levels. I'm really blessed. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling already God is beginning to switch us on. And in my mind, in my spirit, I am ready to go. Now, I want you to make, make sure you invite somebody. Now, our church is a good church to invite somebody. Make sure you invite them. And sometimes you never know. Sometimes you invite somebody and you discover that the ones who needed you to give them a stepping stone to the next level. Peter was invited by somebody else and he became the apostle who was over all apostles. What am I saying? There's something that will change and shift in your life. Let's be able to bring more people tomorrow and hopefully we can fill this place. Now, one thing I love is that the, the people were here, you know, I, I, last year I was inviting other people. These are sons and daughters, everybody. You're talking to my sons and daughters in the spirit. And I want us to bring everybody. Now you can bring the others. Let them come and experience the glory of God. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Are you looking forward to tomorrow? Impartation to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Uh, I want us to arise on our feet. You know, to Maliza. Um, just one or two of you are asking me, you know, why are we not giving? Uh, we already raised money for conference. But I want to say this, that if God is calling you, be able just to sow a seed. Please sow a seed. If you want me to know, make sure I know. Because I say nobody can give to this altar and go scot-free. You must be chased tracked down by the promises of God that account and follow that. Hallelujah. I was just, you know, uh, one of my spiritual daughters in the U.S. asked me, so what's going on? I said, do we have a conference? She's following online. And uh, as I was coming from the office to here, 28,000 shillings are landed. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're in the season of landing. Now, some are saying, Pasini Patie. Now, she is sacrificing. What are you doing? She has heard that I'm not asking for money because she was waiting for us to ask her offering yesterday online. Because I said, you said that you tell me and I pray. Hallelujah. I'll be praying for her later because it landed as I come to the service. What am I saying? God is looking for a partner. And one thing I mentioned yesterday, purpose shall not give, be given to you. You must find it. And what they said, it must be intentional. You decide I shall be married. You are not slapped with marriage. Hallelujah. So if you're waiting for somebody to have pity on you, we shall be rising, you shall be working for us. Ah, you shall hear this tomorrow. Hallelujah. In this service, there are those who are getting elevated and there are those who shall be working for the elevated. You choose your level. It's okay. When I have a bigger car, I'll need drivers. If you don't want yours, at least you'll be in a car, but my car. Okay, I'll get it tomorrow. If you don't want a house tomorrow, after this conference, I'll have my house. If you don't want, at least you'll be in a house, but shall be working at my house. Hallelujah. You choose your level. Ask, tell your neighbor, choose your level. Tell your neighbor, choose your level. Yeah, part of what I told you yesterday, when the instruction of God comes, you hold on to it. And you don't let it go. For in it are the purposes of God established. When I said, Jesus said, in the volume of your book were my days written. When the man of God is declaring the will of God, let me tell you, give it full attention, enter it, get soaked. Why? Because by the time you arise, the demons will not know what has happened to them. One as we you walk in here broke, you're declared rich. <laughs> you know, they said up to five, uh, tomorrow you are broke. Uh, by seven, you come out, you are commanding things. And I like what you're saying. As in the idea that you can walk around and you hear rumors, you need what? One million. Here is two. God give me sons and daughters. Hallelujah. Who can walk in and tell me, man of God, that there's just 10, 10 million loose shillings. Uh, where do you, what they're waiting for is direction. <laughs> you get this tomorrow. They're waiting for that. They're not asking for money. They, this, this, this is just, this is what we need. Bonus fear. 
Some of us are saying you are praying for prosperity. No. Uh, uh, you're already prosperous. I'm already prosperous. I'm not looking for it. I have it. Buenas here. Let that anointing come forth. And when these things happen, there's activation that opens atmospheres. I remember when you know I was trusting God uh, the day I wanted to get married. Uh, what not to, to, to when God gave me the burden to get married. I know my wife. Are we still online? You know, some things I say them, and then I go home. I'm in trouble. So, so the year <laughs> I decided I must get married. I must be elevated because I must grow. I was single and I was very thin. Do not go and search my pictures. Zakitambo, hallelujah. Zaum has worked, hallelujah. you Now those days I told God it. I'm ready. And I think I attended a meeting. There's this lady. She, she's an old lady. She was, she's a gospel singer. And and you know she was there. She just you know she just said. As in she, out of nowhere, you know, she was, she, she was singing on something else. Out of nowhere, she just said, this, There's somebody here, your prayer is that you want a godly woman because you'll be a servant of God and a woman who can stand with you. Ah, my friend. Uh, she says she wants to close service. I just went and said, uh, uh, She's not praying for people, but she must pray for me because it is my word. I must grasp. So when she prayed, we are done. A month later, ah. I came to church early. No, Nikona Kerea kuja church early. And I saw a lady cleaning the church. I'd seen many lady cleaners. Hallelujah. But that day, hallelujah, my Zaum was uh, cleaning. And I said, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Buanas here. Now, some of you want to be met when you're doing makeup. I met Zaum when she was doing, I'll call a pick a duster. <laughs> Glory to God. What am I saying? When there's that activation from the servant of God, the prophetic is released, your life is changed. And this, I want us to hold on to it. It will shift our levels. Bonus here. Tomorrow and Sunday will be another level. Bonus here. And on Sunday, uh, my sister in law has confirmed will be in the house on Sunday. She's called Princess Harriet. So worship on Sunday will be also on another level. Bonus here. Now, when you have Pastor Pancras and uh, you know, uh, Pastor Harriet, uh, you know, if you fail, uh, it, it is up to you. Ata bingu atasema, wewe, you wanted failure. <laughs> you you worked hard for what? For failure. Because there's no door that shall be shut. But you are really blessed. Hallelujah. Buana sifuye. Raise up your hand. Father, I thank you. I bless you. As we go to our houses, we want this word to continue to burn in us. Father, thank you for beginning to raise levels and open heavens of our lives. Father, even as we go into tomorrow, we shall be able to experience higher levels of grace. Ascend your children, but I speak a continuous open heaven that shall be stirring them up as they look into these matters that your servant has spoken. We are blessed and we shall continue tomorrow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as we finish tomorrow at 10, we'll be having a session with Pastor Pankras here. Every conference cycle I have, I have, you know, one-on-one -on -one with the servants of God, whereby they talk to you out of their heart. This is not what I asked him to preach. It's So please come. Uh, mostly, I, I get to ask him questions, but through that, as the Lord leads him, he gets to answer. And I'll talk to him about his, you know, but he'll tell you his own story, you know, his, 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 his journey in work, in faith, and, and you'll be able to ask questions. Why? Because in instruction, you are lifted. You receive understanding so that you can be able to tap. Some of you just here and you're changed to the glory of God. The last cycle we had, uh, the session for, was it April? I had uh, the man of God, Bishop Obed, you know, was here. And, uh, you know, he, he said in his church he cares about having disciples. He doesn't want members. And uh, I started that way. So people have here disciples. Hallelujah. If you want to be a member and don't be a disciple, we don't need you. We actually chase people nowadays. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> but I think this is out of how he talked. And, you know, he mentioned something. That when there's a son, you can insult them and they still come back on Sunday. Because they know where they belong. And I said, I've been struggling. When I say, I'm trying to be sick and sensitive. I don't want to hurt your emotions. I'm going to get a squeeze. I'm going to get a zirika. I'm going to Those who go, I know they are not meant to be here. When I say, I thank the Lord. Tomorrow will you be here? Ten, for those who need leadership. Uh, all our ministers and leaders, I want you to make sure you're here. We'll have lunch. And then the rest who want to come and join at four, it's fine. But you have a special time here with Pastor Pancras. Buenas fe. Let's clap to God for the wonderful time and the blessing that is happening.